In the previous course on call options, we saw the buyer's and the seller's perspective. And then in this course, we saw the buyer's and seller's perspective on put options as well. In this chapter, I want to bring all four of these options together. So we have four options. We have a long call, we have a short call, we have a long put and a short put. So first of all, I want to clarify something in the terminology that's different in the options market than what it is in the uh, stock market. So in the stock market, when we say we are long, we are actually talking about buying a stock and expecting the price to go up and capture a profit. And on the other hand, if you're talking about a short in the market, we are talking about selling the stock first and then when it goes down, we buy it back and then close our position. So that's the terminology used in the stock market. But in the options market, we, go, we use slightly different terminology. Long and short have different meanings in the options market than what it, what it does in the stock market. So let's take a look at this and clarify this point first because it's important. In the options market, when we say we are going long, what we are really talking about is being a buyer of options. If we are a buyer of options, we are long that option. So we could be long a call option and we could be long a put option as well. If we are long a call option, we are bullish. And if we are long a put option, we are bearish. And so, the opposite of being long a call option is being short a call option. And the opposite of being long a put option is being short a put option. So, this part can be a little confusing for newcomers. So, I want to take the time and explain this. So, let's look at Apple. Its last traded price was about $608. It's been moving up. It reported blockbuster results. And so our at the money options are going to be close to uh, the 610, the 605 or the 610. Let's look at the 610 for our example. The 610 call is going for about, let me change the layout here. The 610 call is going for about $26.80 and the 610 put is going for $28.85. So if we wanted to buy one contract, of Apple on the 610 call, we are bullish on Apple. So if you see the risk profile, that's exactly what our risk profile looks like. It's a long call. We are bullish on the upside. On the other hand, if we reverse this graph and if we become a seller of this option, we can see that we are bearish. So it's exactly opposite of the long call. So this is called a short call position. Similarly, if we are long a put, say the 610 put, then we are bearish on the stock. And if we sell the put, we become bullish. So those are the four basic strategies and they are all opposite of each other. So I want to explain this and see how we can remember something like this because it can be confusing for newcomers. So I've prepared this slide, and the title of this slide is called Everything is Opposite. So we first start with a long call. When we are long a call, we've bought the call option, and we are bullish. And the opposite of a long call is going to be the short call. So the short call will then be a bearish instrument because we've sold the call option, and it will be the opposite of a long call. Similarly, if a long call is bullish, then a long put will be bearish. And that's exactly what it is, because when we buy a put option, we are bearish on the stock. And if long puts are bearish, then a short put must be bullish. So everything is opposite, meaning every position has at least two opposites to it, and the opposites are it's adjacent boxes on this slide. So long call 
will be the opposite of a long put as well as the opposite of a short call. Similarly, the long put will be the opposite of a long call and the opposite of a short put. And a short put will be the opposite of a short call and opposite of a long put. And finally, the short call will be a opposite of the long call and the short put. So one of the decision points we have to make uh, when we look at these four different positions is which one do we choose? Because if we are bullish, we have two different strategies to implement. And if we are bearish, again, we have two different strategies. So which ones do we choose and when? So that's a decision point that uh, you'll have to make. And basically what it comes down to is how bullish or how bearish you are on the stock. If you're, for some reason, for any fundamental opinion or a technical opinion, if you're wildly bullish, then you obviously go for the long call because you don't want to limit your upside profits. Similarly, if you're wildly bearish on a stock, then you would go outright and buy a long put because, again, you'll have unlimited profits as long as the stock goes down. But, if you're unsure, then you could use the short call or the short put positions. Then what you need to do is put probability on your side, go out of the money and use a short call or a short put to implement your outlook. Uh, there is an unlimited risk component of both short calls and short puts, but I don't want you to be alarmed by that because we can use spreads to mitigate those risks. But to remember these four basic strategies, um, it can be confusing. And the best way to actually remember this is to remember only one of them. So the most natural one to remember is the long call. The long call will be exactly like buying a stock. So we are bullish. We expect it to go up. And we can capture a profit by selling it once it's gone up. And once we remember what a long call is, then we know that a short call is just its opposite. And similarly, the long put will also be just its opposite. But whenever we are sellers of options, remember your profit is limited. And whenever you are buyers of options, your profit is unlimited. And once you remember one of them, you know that it has two opposites. There will be one opposite on the same side, which is the call side. And then there will be one opposite on the other side, which is the put side. And once you know that a long put is bearish, then you know that a short put has to be bullish. So this is a good way of thinking about these four different options. If you can uh, print out this slide or keep this slide in mind when you're thinking about the four different options, I think it will become clearer as you get more exposed to it.